I want to ask you a question. Who's coaching you? Who's asking you the tough questions? Who's telling you, man, you're the common denominator to all of your issues and challenges? Who's telling you, man, all day long, you become the magnetic pulse that attracts to you both good and bad? I want to be your life coach. I want to be the one that cheers you on to the finish line. I want to be the one that you ask the tough questions. And it doesn't mean that I have all the answers. But that means that you have a partner, someone who believes in you, not the you you see right now, but the you you can't imagine, the you that you are to become, the you you were destined to be. I always say, you both need the positive and the negative. It's not enough to have the knowledge of the matter, but we must have the wisdom as well. For well, wisdom settles it. And that's what I want to offer you as you join me on the Coach's Corner. I want to offer you the wisdom of the matter. Maybe it might be relationships. Talking about our campaigns for more, for life. The dark room for our subconscious. Our spiritual journey. Whatever it is, I want to be there to encourage you, to build you, to challenge you, to cheer you on to the finish line. I'm qualified to do this. Why? Because I'm, you. because I'm you. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of The Coach's Corner. My name is Marcus Sillette, and assuredly, I bring to the table my personal and professional issues, but I also bring to the table the wisdoms that I have learned from the journey of life. And I trust that through those, those wisdoms, you will allow me to earn the right to speak into your life or at least together we could muse over things that we dare to talk about out loud such as the topic why do we love but don't like our mates I don't know how much time I can devote to that thought <laughs> uh, but it's worth entertaining uh, to at least explore uh, a frustrating dynamic uh, and to make sure that we're not leaving a festering ficker. <laughs> but uh, thank you so very much for those who are joining us on the various platforms where we randomly and selectively air. Uh, newest, our newest platforms we're exploring is Blog Talk Radio as well as Podomatic. Thank you so much for my Spreecast listeners, VoiceCast, iBroadcast TV, those joining us on Twitter, Spreaker, those joining us on YouTube under SIB in Atlanta or Select USA TV. This is The Coach's Corner, and I'm Marcus Select. All right, Engineer did it again. Thank you, sir. Uh, why do we love but don't like our mates? I don't know how much time I'll be able to devote to that, but the reason why I post pose that is because I think I told you of a story once where my parents who's been married well over 50 years uh, were sharing a story and uh, my my mom said to my father uh, I don't like you um, and uh, I don't know if she knows that I'm sharing this because <laughs> um, you know but uh, I think it's because we find that that in a relationship uh for those that are married or in a relationship there when you're there for a long period of time you realize and understand that there are stubborn areas that seemingly will never change um that there will always be uh these areas of of uh of uh, agitation you know where there's a nagging you know and I don't think it's a real big deal, but it can become a big deal because uh, men are accomplished based. You know, I've, I've talked about this before and women are relationship based and it'd be good for for the two of them to get together sometime and just find out, well, how can we mutually benefit one another? I mean, it's just my wishful thinking, right? 
But I mean, in the interest of love, we end up trying to work together. But what often happens is we lose our way when we forget how we're made. Men are not made to relate. I mean, they can learn to relate. And this, I wish women would understand this. Men learn to relate. Women learn to accomplish. If you look at the culture, and that doesn't mean that women are not accomplished. Please do not send me a bunch of bad emails. But women learn that accomplishment is also something they're interested in, whereas their hearts are always going to be centered and their giftings and their natural abilities are always going to be centered on relating. In other words, you can get an, you can get an advice from a woman about how to handle a human being quicker than a man, but you're getting advice from a man on how to accomplish something quicker than you can from a woman. It's just each one respectively, you know, have their, 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 uh, their natural, um, maturation towards their, uh, their, gender abilities it's cross gender in many areas but uh men are just not relationship based i mean we become that we are trained in that we have to be orientated in that and a lot of people want to say no we're equal and there's nothing different and I'll, you know i mean come on i mean let's respect the sexes male and female he made them speaking of god but the point of the matter is in our relationships, I think that we we just simply forget how we're made and what is the maturation, what is the natural maturation, maturational process toward life. Uh, you get a man that just not is not growing in his accomplishments. He's more likely to wander. His thoughts are more likely to be. Uh, full of depression and sadness. Uh, he's more likely to cheat. This is just a good man. I ain't talking about no player punks and pimps, you know. But, you know, men, the, and then, you know, I know a lot of you women out there are saying, well, but, you know, I, I got a good man. He got a good job, da, 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 da. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's accomplishing anything. Uh, the sense of accomplishment, I think, comes from a personal goal set and a personal goal reach within the scope of integrity. Rewind that and listen to that again. But men, we are always, you know, the sad part about being a man, and there's sad parts about being a woman, being a woman, I'm sure, but is that there's always a hunt. There's always an instinct. There's always a sense now. You can train it, but there's always a sense that you're on the prowl. I don't care who you are. <laughs> and the more respect that you're getting from your marriage or from your relationship, the more that I think that that's tamed. Because we, are, we men are egos. The ego is based on what we can and cannot accomplish. Come on, ladies, can you give us a break? We're shallow. But that shallow water is the entryway into the deep ocean. I need some help right there. That shallow pool is the entryway for those who can't swim but yet want to enjoy. You feel what I'm saying? So while women are much more sophisticated in the intricacy of intricacies of relating, if you will, naturally speaking, uh, men are... Are, are, are more ma seemingly materialistic only because they are egotistically driven to accomplish and to impress the female species, if you will, <laughs> uh, with that ability. You see, in a relationships, okay, let me let me go back and say it like this. Ladies, never forget, we're trying to impress you. And, and I mean, I'm just talking about a good man. I'm not talking about, you know, if you've heard my, my show about pimps, players, and punks, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about men who are mature and moving on or accountable, responsible, things of that nature. But never forget that we're trying to impress you. So here's, here's a turnoff. Here's why I don't like you. I'm just going to role play here, okay? I don't like you because you're trying to be a man. 
How do I know you're trying to be a man? You override me in my decision making. When it comes to talking, I know that you have 25,000 words to my 250. But when I say something, it doesn't have as much weight as if when you're saying something, you want all the weight to be given to what you say. But when I say something, even though I know statistically that men say less than women, you still have not weighed what I have said in a respectful manner. That's why I don't like you. Oh, you thought that's 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 a trip right there, right? <laughs> why I don't like you? I'm just I'm just being I'm just being rhetorical. I'm 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 role playing here, talking from the man perspective, and women could probably do the same thing. If you want to send me why you don't like us as men, <laughs> I'll, I'll receive it. Global coverage at SelectUSATV.info. Okay, Marcus at Gmail dot com. Send me why you don't like men. But I don't I don't like you. I love you, but I don't like you because. You want me to be sensitive to your emotional whims. You want me to be sensitive to the details of change in your appearance, whether it be, you know, honey, have I lost weight or did you notice my hair or whatever? But the simple things that that could st that could stroke my ego you don't want to do it you really don't I don't like you because women you really don't want to stroke my ego you don't want to do it you do it as a result of duty it seems you don't want to stroke it because you know that's how we're made you don't like the fact that we even have an ego that's why I don't like you I don't I, I may love but I don't like that right there <laughs> you see what I'm saying and like I said, I'm sure women could say the same, but I'm just, I'm being honest. You know, uh, the coach's corner is about sh shooting straight from the heart. And then the topic on the table is why we love, but don't like our mates. And we're, I, I got to speak from a man's perspective, a man's perspective. I don't like you because you have some areas of your relating to me they it seems to be vanity whereas if i was to pick up the same vein or vanity type behavior i would be criticized and ostracized but it's okay for you for ex for, for example i heard this statement like four thousand times no i'm not saying i'm just joking i heard this statement i don't know what i'm going to do about my shoes and so uh I built a closet for her once, built another closet wall for her twice. Same wall, but all the way up to the ceiling this time. Year later, I don't know what I'm going to do about my shoes. How about going through the shoes that you have? This is my thinking. Weeding out what you have. And if you buy some shoes, then you just trade them out. The ones that you wear, you you know, don't don't need anymore, whatever. But it's like a continuation. All right, so how about if I say I'm going to buy me another flat screen TV? Then we got a problem. Well, we already got. So now you can diagnose me about how many TVs I have. But when you have 95 pairs of shoes and want to get 20 more pairs and make room for them jokers, that's the part that really trips me out. Then you want to like complain. <laughs> I mean, you think it's okay to have 95 pairs of shoes and then make room for 25 more pairs, of which we don't have any more room for, for, for no more shoes. We probably could find some somewhere, but <laughs> you know, I'm just saying being a devil's advocate here, you know? So, I mean, so we're in these relationships and we have these areas. And I think what happens is we forget, you know, how we're made. And, and, and I don't think that women like the fact that men are egotistical. I just don't think that they like that. I, don't, I mean, they like it when it's convenient. That's just my feeling. You know, I have my feelings about it. Um, you know, I'm going to be honest right here on the coach's call. You're going to get some stuff that you ain't going to get nowhere else right here. Okay. Without the vulgarity and without the, you know, disparaging excuses and and a whole lot of other things okay you're gonna get it as straight as i can give it to you 
But I just don't think that women like the fact that men have an ego. And I think that men don't like the fact that women have emotions. And it's not to say that the emotions is weak. Please, y'all, please stop tripping with that. You got to have, you got to be emotionally centered in order to deal with people. And women do that well overall, or generally speaking, women do well with people better than men. Look at the statistical growth of the feminine movement and other things in the Western culture. And you'll find that women have maturated because they have gotten men to sit down, shut the hell up and discuss what men normally do not want to discuss. And that is we got to we got to do better so i can feel better and this me feeling better will allow you to accomplish more if i feel accepted if i feel okay if i feel that i'm somewhat equal or whatever the case may be not saying all of these things because i agree with all of these things i'm just putting it out there as if women would say something to that to that sort is that you can accomplish more men in culture if you listen to us and if we're happy you will be released to do and accomplish more I don't know maybe I got that right or wrong but the men are saying what the hell are we saying <laughs> I mean you know I, I think that we are saying that, you know, the sad part, as I said, I have to fall back on this. It would be nice if women would acknowledge that men are, first of all, attracted to other things. And like one time mine said to me, Wow, look at her. She looks nice. It might have been once out of you know, 20 years, okay? Wow, uh, she looks nice. I thought that was soothing. I was like, oh, wow, she's pointing out a girl that looks nice. And when I looked, I mean, I was like, okay, yeah, she's okay, you know. But the point of the matter is that played into my ego. I don't know if you got that. And what happens is men are turned off easier than women, I think. I mean, we're on the hunt all the time. It doesn't have to be for women. It's just we're on the hunt to accomplish something, to impress someone. We're like kids. Men are. I know some women are glad I said that. They're, yeah, they're a bunch of kids. They're a bunch of kids, I tell you. <laughs> you know. But we are, it seems. And... I think men are we are so attractive to what we see it's just part of the egotistical makeup of who we are and we have to learn or we have to educate ourselves on how to put in perspective what we see uh my son my last boy he uh you know, the last child, they just, I don't know what's going on with that, but this boy is all over us. You know, he's all over dad. And so anyway, he was rubbing his hand on my face. I was like, man, please don't put your hands all on my face. Da, 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 da. He says, man, I like that, you know, because I hadn't shaved. And then he said, uh, I said, well, I got to shave. He says, no, 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 don't shave. It's so smooth. And I thought that was ironic. So there, a child played into a man's ego. He said, my face was smooth, but I hadn't shaved. Whereas she said, what are you going to do about your face the day before? Which statement plays into the needs of a man? The question which men do not like to be questioned. I'll talk about that hopefully more in a minute. The question, what are you going to do about your face, does not play into a man's ego. Why? That's why he loves you and don't like you. Because when you question a man, whether it's legit or not is not the point. It's almost an insult. It's a soft insult in some cases. 
but my son said he's rubbing on my face and he said to me just your 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 uh, face is smooth and I was like well in my mind you know I had made that equation real quick okay how can my mind my face be smooth when I hadn't shaved when she just said what you gonna do about your face <laughs> and, then, and then my son said don't shave because I, no, I said, well, I got to shave. He says, why don't you, why don't you grow your beard out? And I said, no, I'm not going to grow it out because I've gotten, I've gotten a lot of gray now. He says, gray is cool. Okay. He said three statements that fed into the ego. Overweighing a shaved face that I had been clean shaven for like over a year or so. No mustache, no beard, you know, modest sideburns at best. And in one statement, he gets dad to grow his beard back out, had not shaved, but just, you know, start trimming up, get ready to grow my beard back out and mustache back out. Because we're egotistical driven, egotistically driven. And we love our mates and don't like them because I just, I'm, I'm just personally, this is me. I am not convinced that women know how or if they know how, whether they like. Now, emotionally, they have the capacity to do it, and emotionally, they have to have uh, the sense of the season to do it. I just don't feel, I just, I'm not impressed that they want to. Uh, I'm not impressed. I mean, my mother doesn't even stroke my ego, you know. So, uh, I think that's what's wrong with men. I think that we have a, a a modest amount of accomplishments, but we don't have, we don't seem, unless you're, you know, one of those guys from the 50s, 40s, and 50s. I'm telling my age now, but I just don't think, I don't think the modern day guy, just, I just I'm, I'm, maybe I'm being a bit dismal. I just don't, I don't see the connection really to be honest with you and somebody would say well are you happy you know I think that that's irrelevant because happiness is based on perhaps circumstances and part of what being a man is all about is learning how to relate through covenant and through uh, commitment and uh, finding uh, the the uh, the treasure of the hunt within the unfolding revelations of a principle-based love that continues to reveal secrets giving you longevity in a relationship though you may be threatened by external factors and when we move forward by faith in love agape agape hasid love in mercy when we move forward in faith, by faith, we find and discover, talking about men now, we find and discover v values and treasures of love that you would not find in shallow relationships. Though you are tempted as men, if we were to be honest, Christian and otherwise, we are tempted to follow our attractions because we have a hunger inside of us for egotistical stroking. And this is not just from our our, our uh, mates or our, our girlfriends or whatever. This is from society. We've been struck and smacked around as men, as particularly African American men, in our society. To be frank with you. To be frank with you, I I'm gonna tell you something. This is, this is a secret. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I like my mate more after a glass of red wine because the stroking of the ego becomes easy I know y'all gonna I know somebody gonna email me on that one right there but I'm just I'm just telling you give her a half a glass of red wine and she'd get to talking like she did when I first met her <laughs> she'd get to talking like she, she did when I first met her for real and you give her a whole a full glass. She she says she is there where she was when I first met her. And when I first met her, it wasn't a glass of wine that did it. Come on, I need some help right there. <laughs> so while we love you and don't like you because you changed to the degree that you forgot, 
And the same way with women with men. Men change it. You know, we did X, Y, and Z to to attract you or to 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 to, to solidify the hunt, however you want to put it. And then we got so busy in the accomplishment of everyday goals, mission, you know, strategy, tactics, whatever you want to call it. And we have forgotten. We have forgotten. We have forgotten how to show other than cards on Mother's Day and flowers on Valentine's Day and a few gifts on Christmas. We just have not lived up to what we put out as the for the initial hunt if you will but men you know we struggle we struggle in society as 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 often as women are trying to be equal to us i don't know what all the fuss is about <laughs> cuz there ain't no easy day being a man around here you know especially in the western culture sometimes i think that there are a lot of people that i know might take some heat for this one but personally, I feel that, that that men are taking a hit because now everybody wants to come out the closet as being gay. So now where does that leave us? We're too weak to be men. We're too uh, broken. We are too cross, genetically cross, genetically inclined to follow a feeling. I, I mean, I just I mean, where does that leave us as men? When it's more popular and acceptable in culture, politically and beyond to be gay than straight. The straight man is at seems like seems like he's almost going to be extinct in 20, 50 years. And so this is another blow to our ego. Nothing against people who are gay. But the point of the matter is this. That we were already struggling with our egotistical makeup. And then all of a sudden here comes this gay conversation. That is still not honest. It is still not an honest conversation going on in the gay community because right now there's only one or two of the extremes. One, coming out of the closet and how was the experience. And two, whether or not you are happy having come out, but there is no conversation in between. And then there seems to be a bullying. There seems to be a bullying from the gay community that we all must accept gay marriage and accept gay this and gay that. And if we don't, then we're less than human. And then, of course, you have the other argument of those who are dogmatic that these all these folks are going to hell in the handbasket and on and on and on. We can't seem to have a real conversation about this situation. And and my personal feeling is that the real conversation shouldn't start with the sensual part of it, the sexual sensual part. But some says this this gender identification is the center of our purpose. And I just simply disagree. I simply disagree with that. But back to why we love but don't like. uh, We're not quite comfortable where we are as men. And as women, we're just not comfortable. We're not. And with an ever changing culture, we're still being challenged. We're still being ruffled. We're still being threatened. The heterosexual community of men are threatened right now. I'm telling you right now. I mean, maybe you can believe whatever you want. You can believe this, you know, this, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of forcing of cultural progression. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's principle centered though. <laughs> First of all, we should treat everybody with dignity and respect, but we should never say that one will be penalized over the other for the language that is not acceptable regarding a group's sexual preference. We'll have some shows on that, but I got to get out of here. I just wanted to talk to you guys just briefly about, you know, why we like you, why we love you, but may not like you. I think we're just suffering, egotistically speaking, as men, you know, just speaking for the men, you know, suffering from not enough compliments, not enough suffering from being tolerated and not celebrated. That's why I'm. That's why I do life coaching. That's that's not that's not to make money. It's not to for a title. It's not because you know what I got tired of being tolerated, and I got tired of being people just tolerated. I wanted to celebrate other people. So that's what I do. It's a rough job. Catch me next time. Follow me on Twitter if you can.